Now we're talking with Matt Hardegree. He is the executive director of Jalopnik.com, but uh, we're going to talk today more about a new TV show, a special that is coming out of National Geographic Channel uh, to our special, Driving America. Uh, how are you, Matt? I'm doing well. How are you, Javier? Great. Thank you for for the time and the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, so, um, what, what's uh, what's about this uh, new special on, on National Geographic? I mean, they put out so great uh, programming, so this must be really good. Yeah, it's great. I got a screener of it uh, a few days ago and got to watch it. Um, what you're looking at is sort of, if you enjoy Cosmos, you know, it's just the first episode that gives you a tour of the universe uh, in a couple hours. Uh, what we're going to do is reflect back on car history and car culture, uh, what it means to, to love cars and what it means to have a car in America, going all the way back to Oliver Evans in the 18th century, you know, all the way up to today with electric cars and driverless cars. Uh, it's, a, it's a really great look for people who, who know cars uh, or people who don't know a lot about cars to, to learn about uh, the history of it. Yeah, and uh, you're going to be able to do that in two hours? <laughs> That's a tough, a tough job, I think, huh? Yeah, it, it's, it moves very quickly. I mean, it, it's definitely a little bit here and a little bit there. Um, and, and so it's a, it's a, a very uh, quick look at the history to cover everything, but I think that even within that time, we're going to tell stories about things that you, you didn't know, and, and you're going to remember things that you didn't know. Yeah, so without giving out everything away, I mean, what do you think will be like the highlights, let's say, of the early eras? I mean, people know about the, the team all from Ford and Henry Ford and all those things, but there must be like so many other stories that people don't know about, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the great ones is uh, Essex. You know, people always talk about the Model T, and the Model T is a very important vehicle, obviously. Um, but there's a company called Essex, and what they did was they built a car with an enclosed cabin, and they were one of the first people to do that. Uh, and the idea of having a, you know, a cockpit in a cabinet that wasn't open, because you know, the early cars were open, they didn't have doors, they had very small doors, uh, that you could have private conversations. You can make out with your girlfriend. You can do all of these things because you have glass and door and roof between you and the outside world. And it, it's one of those little innovations that immediately caught on and everyone did. Uh, and we think about you know, the Model A and we think all these cars that embrace that, uh, but we don't necessarily know about ethics and, and what that's meant to people. So is uh, that this uh, show? It's uh, specific about the American industry. I mean that, or it's just like the global uh, auto industry. So what we're really talking about is how car culture has impacted America and the history of the car in America. But okay. some of that history is foreign history. So we talk about the Volkswagen. I mean, the Volkswagen Diesel is a car that was built for Hitler's Germany and for what what Hitler viewed as, as a necessity because Hitler wanted his own Model T. But then it, what ends up happening is the war ends. Germany needs an industry, they need an infrastructure, and so the United States allows them, the allies, the British forces, allow them to build the car, and what they build is the Volkswagen Beetle, and that becomes a hugely popular and important moment in history. Yeah, and that car in the 70s here in America was really popular, and it's kind of uh, a little bit strange how Volkswagen is not doing that well today, even though they have good cars here, in, I mean, all over the world, right? Oh, yeah, I mean, Volkswagen is huge in China. I mean, they sell more cars in China than they are in America right now. And, and that's uh, uh, this also just sort of this weird interplay of history. So, you know, Nixon going to China in the 70s, and that's opening up and normalizing relations as part of a real politic move to balance out Russia is a thing that now allows GM to, uh, to thrive because GM's biggest market, too, is China. And you, you just have basically this interplay of history and technology and just crazy moments of time. And you think of oil and OPEC and the embargo and the K-car. Just this amazing history is what we explore, which is why you know, we, we need two hours to do it. I think that you're going to get to the end of the show Monday night, and you're going to watch two hours, and you're going to watch eight hours more. Yeah, that's amazing. So it's not just a, a one series, a, a, a series of how many shows? Uh, so it's just a two-hour special. Um, it's a very much focused on Memorial Day, Uh, people who've been out on the road, as AAA reported, we're going to see so many people uh, driving more than we've seen in past years uh, on road trips to Memorial Day. So it's, it's really a two-hour special to give you really a great overview of American car history. So if you love cars or you've been in a car, you, you, you've gone on road trips, I think you're going to love this show. And I assume there's a lot of uh, motorsports in it, uh, because, I mean, that's also a very important part, especially Memorial Day weekend, and with the Indy 500, the Coca-Cola 600 from NASCAR, I mean, all those races, uh, Formula One, which is not in the States, but it impacts in some way the States, I mean, people watching it, I guess. So, do you include some of that in the, in the show, too? Yeah, there's a lot of IndyCar in there, because, you know, it's Memorial Day weekend, so it's perfect, so, so you'll, you'll see a lot of Indy, and you'll learn about Indy. But with the Indy 500, that, that's a great piece of history, too, because you have this great um, entrepreneur who's a bike salesman named Carl Fisher uh, in Ohio. 
and he started to get into automobiles. He was part of the original Good Roads movement, and he realized that, you know, if we're going to get people to care about cars, then what we need to do is give them a place to see these amazing vehicles. And so they built the Brickyard, and they built this huge brick line uh, and, and track. Uh, and started the Indy 500 because the idea of a, a car being able to go for 500 miles or is sort of this amazing, you know, or 500, you know, 500 is such a huge number for cars back in the day. Uh, so we definitely explore that. It's definitely a big part of history. Yeah, I believe it's around uh, more than 100 races already there, right? I mean, for the Indy 500, which is amazing, and we're to see where the cars were with the beginning and like during the practices or the qualifying sessions we saw like terrific accidents and people most of them walking away from them it's amazing how the technology has evolved in uh, in the automotive in the motorsports uh, part of the automotive oh yeah exactly yeah no exactly you're, you're totally right because you, you'll see technology then safety cells safety cells are things invented for, for race cars and end up on street cars and so we you can't i mean the great thing is it's all so intertwined and that's what we try to tease out some of those strands of history and how motorsports connects to the car that you drive, connects to the good roads and connects to all these amazing things. Yeah, and uh, I guess you also touch about like, the future, the immediate future at least, which is like pretty uncertain. I mean, we know that something is coming up with autonomous driving, like all these kind of technologies, but it's a we're living, would you agree, we're living in the, one of the most exciting periods of uh, automotive uh, development and like uh, what we're going to see in the, past, in the next five, ten years. It's like shocking, I think, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're an automotive journalist like me. You, you get to drive all these cool cars. You've been in the new uh, Infiniti. I'm sure you've been in the new Infiniti Q60 or you've been in the Q50, the Q50 yes. excuse me. Um, or you've been in the Mercedes S-Class where you can sit in traffic in a lane, it'll keep your lane for you. It'll look at the lines of the road and it'll just do the driving and it'll use radar cruise control to, and sonar to see where you are in relation to other cars and will just do all of the driving for you, which is unfathomable. And the same thing with the Tesla Model S. I mean, for so long we were sold on the idea of electric cars as being efficient but not exciting, but a Model S in insane mode is just that it's insane with how fast you can go. Yeah, it's amazing. The autonomous driving part is like such a huge topic, and obviously we don't have any time to talk about that. But it's something that, uh, I mean, people are going to have to change their attitude to our cars, I think, right? I mean, this is a completely new, f different way of uh, using cars in the, f in the near future. Yeah, for, for good and for bad. And we, we actually, one of the things that we do in the show is that we, we explore the, the positive impacts, um, and, but also the negative impacts, obviously sprawl and pollution and all of that. So I think autonomous cars come with with both. You know, we, we have an issue where uh, will it encourage people to drive more than they need to? Because when you can just hop in a car and it'll drive for you and take you to the mall where you could have otherwise walked or taken a bike, like is that necessarily a good thing? So I think as a society we're going to have to make big decisions over, you know, what do we want and then what is actually ultimately best because if autonomous cars just make us drive more and just lead to more congestion and that's not a positive impact. Well, it sounds like a great show, and again, it uh, starts this Monday, night, May 25th at 9 p.m. on the National Geographic Channel, but it will be rebroadcast later. Uh, do you know any schedules uh, after that Monday, or it's only a one-time shot? Uh, I don't know for sure. I'm sure it'll be rebroadcast, but you definitely, you, everyone's going to be talking about it the next day, so you definitely want to tune in uh, 9 p.m. Uh, Pacific and uh, Eastern, uh, all the way to night. Excellent. Uh, so we're talking with Matt Hardegree, he's the executive director of Jalarnik.com, and uh, also I guess uh, a lot of everybody can go on Jalarnik.com to see all the great coverage that you guys do, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, it's what people do instead of work now. Now it's, it's almost Memorial Day weekend. You don't want to work. Just reach the lobby. <laughs> That's it. Not even dri not even drive. Just watch. I mean, you have to drive a little bit. Well, drive a little bit and then pull out your phone, you know, when you're in a safe spot and then read a little bit and then drive some more, you know. It's, it's, uh, we're hoping to, to snap as much money out of the economy by people getting to long as possible. Well, thank you, Matt. Uh, great pleasure talking to you. Uh, we're going to enjoy the show. Have a great day. Thank you. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.